Welcome one and all, whoever may be watching this, part 38, Tides of Numenera. We are in the old slave block. Uh, we've explored the area and um, we have uh, found a way to help Aretas, uh, but there's still a billion mysteries going on in here. We have to try to help What's Her Face get her sight. We have to try to get the frame back for um, Alagern, but like, so far no clues as to how to do that aside from like fighting everyone. I don't particularly want to do that, and there's obviously this weird room here, which I'm assuming if we go in, we'll initiate some kind of crisis. I don't know if the frame's in here though, so maybe we'll have to deal with that at some point. All right. What I do want to do is if we go back and talk to the head honcho, I don't really know why I want to do that, but just kind of see, oh gosh, I've just noticed. I've just noticed what's going on in the middle of the floor here, and that is so uncomfortable. Let's just get through this. The slim, fit young woman would be attractive if it weren't for the blank stare in her eyes, the spit drooling from her mouth, and the poorly implanted devices that protrude from her skull. The area around the implants weeps pus and some strange clear fluid. It does not appear that she has been mistreated in any other way. No bruises or scars mark her otherwise smooth flesh. Unsurprisingly, you can read no thoughts of any kind from her. What's your name? She stares blankly. You can see the slight pulse of a heartbeat in her veins near one metallic nodule on her forehead, and she breathes. But lacking these signs, only the thin stream of drool gathering mass at her chin tells you that she lives. I asked you, what's your name? Her gaze is completely empty. She doesn't respond at all. No use talking to this one. Those implants have likely fried anything resembling a personality she may have once had. Any reactions she has now are purely involuntary. As a life form, she has less self-awareness than your average insect. He shakes his head. A pity. The young woman begins to bark and choke a little, bending at the waist as she spits out a guttural string of hard consonants. A moment later you realise she is merely imitating the Murden chief who has been watching your interactions with the woman. The Murden is struggling not to laugh out loud, so are the rest of the Murdens. Their metallic static is filled with a savage glee at seeing the human make a fool of herself. The Murden chief's voice comes through the woman's mouth. Do you speak to empty bags? To corpses? Do they answer? Empty husks do not speak. Those wanting answers want to speak to me. <sighs> yeah, but we've tried talking to you and you've been less than helpful. Angry static fills your head. The chief puffs up his feathers, looming over you, eyes glittering in the dim light. Oh. I owe you? You should be grateful to me. He would have been more trouble than he was worth. The chief clacks his beak and hisses angrily. Humans always cheat, Murden. No more cheating. Oh, I don't want to do this. I really don't. All right, so what can my dude do? We've only got one enemy thus far. I... Okay, stay there, my dude. It doesn't help that we're all lacking in leg speed. Oh gosh, far out. Ah! 
There are so many of these guys. They have me surrounded. It's cool. Look at all the stuff that I can use. <laughs> Okay, so that consumes a movement. I just want to know if I can heal, um, what's his face? So this says all characters in range, so is that going to be, um, friendly fire? Okay, whereas this says all enemies, so maybe I'll use that. So, can I... Um, I mean, he's not close to me. You have no idea. Thanks. Oh, far out. Okay, um... Do you want to just... Why can't he attack anything? I'm so confused. Let's just go for it. Excellence. Oh, that didn't work? Okay, cool. All right, so we are all flanked and then some. So... Um... He can heal. I might get him to heal my dude. I can breathe again. And that counts as an action, doesn't it? Oh, didn't it work? I'm so confused. Oh, it didn't. Shivers. Alright, hang in there, my dude. Yep. Uh, okay, so someone's like on their deathbed. <laughs>
Okay, excellent. Um, he can't heal or anything. Oh gosh, hang in there. this okay just you've got to hang in there my dude um, I'm just trying to decide let's take out the chief let's just go for it Yeah, that's why I tried to... Oh, okay, they're going for me. On all sides. Um, can you do anything with this dude? <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so I need to be... Me surrounded. I'm aware. I need to be healed, but... um. Sort of that gamble. Do I try to do damage? Huh. Didn't see that coming. Okay, so we took one out. Of course. Just like run away for a hot second. <laughs> run away! Run away! Let's try to take this one out. That's two of them left. What can you do for me, seeing as you're not hiding right now? You can blind them. Okay, uh, can you hide again? Nice. Not that she's near anyone. Die, oh gosh, oh gosh. I bet your ancestors felt that. Oh phew. Okay, so we need to heal my dude somehow That's more like it. it's the best I can do um, but I've got a rain oh okay <laughs> uh, okay can we heal him anymore apparently not I'm confused by that Okay, we're doing well. Uh, your, can you, yes, go. Wow. I think that's the most successful, that is actually the only successful crisis event I've had. What do I do now? <laughs> I am the very soul of action. Uh, okay, looting is right. not easy. On it. Oh nice, we've got a key. How's that gonna help me, I wonder? On it. Not only is it the most successful crisis I've had, no one died. I am so chuffed. Yes. Can 
Okay, so about its standard lines the edge of the Murden chief's nest, covered in his filth. Its cloth is torn and ragged, but it remains largely intact. Why do I want to take it? Carefully disentangling the standard from the refuse in the Murden chief's nest, you pull it free of the twigs, Murden feathers, rotted flesh, and assorted bones and scraps without damaging it much further. The smell trapped within its folds would make an anine gag. You fold up the standard and place it in your pouch. Okay, but none of this helps me with the frame. That's all I want. Okay, killer out of mercy. Okay, but again, none of this helps me find the frame. <laughs> Does that mean, like, the only place... Done. Why is it telling me I can interact? Okay, I'm assuming that's just the door. On it. So then, I mean, the only place left right. is this spot here. But we'll need to rest before I do anything further with combat related anythings. All right. Thanks. Just what I needed. Good job, guys. I'm proud of you. Why do you only have two speed? What on earth has happened to you to make that happen? <laughs> okay, so I'm also thinking as far as Aretas is concerned... Um... Yeah... So I'm assuming it's back in that last room. So then I'm assuming to get back into my mind palace, I either need to touch the thing that was in the katina or drink the fluid. And I'm not super keen on drinking the fluid, so we might have to go back to Little Nilesh. But a healer of some kind. So maybe if we go back to the Chergian place. A curious thought occurred to me. You know I've warned you about those. Really, Eritus? Why, yes. I am. I am really Eritus. <laughs> oh, good one. <sighs> you know, it is so nice to have someone I can talk to. I'm gonna go back and kill myself. Let's just deal with his situation. <laughs> On that note. Alright, so I'm working under an assumption here. Because the ghosts were like, oh, bad things will happen if you touch that. I don't actually know if this will kill me, but I just feel like, you know, bad things happening generally mean death. I'm ready. Oh. Do I want to eject the core? Let's do it. Okay, they're asking me to reconsider. I haven't been reading this. Maybe this won't kill me. Ooh. That's not good. <laughs> Hey, I don't know what I'm doing, but like, let's go for it. Oh gosh, far out. Um, I should have read this. Well, 
that oh did we just kill all the ghosts oh i'm sorry guys yes but i did take something i don't know what though oh i feel i feel a bit bad well all right so that's not how i'm gonna die I just don't really want to drink the bloom juice, but apparently that might be the only way to die. It's either that or we can just travel through the moor here. I don't know, let's just go places until something happens. <laughs> A reddened mass of flesh protrudes from the bloom wall, surrounded by waving tendrils. The flesh is thick and strong, glistening like a newborn beast. A jagged seam runs across its surface, with a faint light spilling from within. As you approach, all the sounds of little Nilesh seem to fade. The hushed conversations of the mutants recede into the distance, replaced by the hissing, chittering voices of the bloom. Makina lays a hand on your shoulder, a moor. Whispered Makina as if she didn't want to draw its attention. Her voice is wary, respectful. Those waving tendrils, they're its tongues. The bloom is focused here. If it likes the smell of you, it'll take a bite. Her mouth quirks a little, probably for the best of our ilk to steer clear. Uh, will that kill me? The hissing and chittering of the bloom are no different than usual, as far as you can tell. Your sharp senses provide no particular advantage in hearing the odd sounds. You realize the bloom's voices are a psychic phenomenon, not a physical one. They are literally voices in your head. Okay... The tendrils seem to be fixed upon Allegan. They stretch towards him like the arms of desperate lovers, but he stays carefully out of reach, eyeing them suspiciously. Allegan, I think it wants to feed on you. It's your keen powers of observation that keep us all so close to you. I'll stay here, thanks. His eyes follow the dance of the bloom tongues as they strain towards him, beckoning and reaching. What do you think it wants, Allegan? His eyes have taken a faraway look as he keeps a watch on the moor's tongues as if they were hypnotizing him, and his voice has lost its usual harsh edge. Guilt. He wants to eat my guilt. I mean, we need to open the moor. <laughs> sure, and why don't you go court a cragworm, he replies. See how you like being devoured. She wouldn't dare feed me to that thing, except she probably would. Right, so I guess if he eats him, he dies. So then, like, if I offer myself, do I die and then, like, what and stuff? <sighs> okay. Fine. Well, uh, I mean, really, I just want to die. So if the moo, the more does want to eat me, <laughs> I just uh, mixed more and bloom together there. Um, that would be fantastic because then it's like a win-win. The more gets food, and I get to die. Maddie, a riddle, but not a thinking one. What is handsome, glowing, and pleasing to your eyes? You? On fire? You know, you're not very good at riddles. Ready. So this is really the only other option that presents itself. Yes. 
Yes. Okay, cool. That worked. Third time's the charm. <laughs> Progress has been made in some way, shape or form. Ah, uh, cool. So this is where I'll end the video, I guess. And then we can go talk to Evritus. Maybe see what Um has to say, if anything. I haven't talked to him for a while.